Hello and welcome to the Lewis and Clark State Historic Site. My name is Ben and today we're going to take a look at how to make ink out of berries. Uh, this is going to be the first video in a series of videos looking at quill, ink, and journaling uh, because taking notes and documenting their trip was incredibly important to the Lewis and Clark expedition. And so to learn more about that and to appreciate how they were doing that, I want to dive into making some different types of ink and uh, exploring what it would have been like to journal in the field as the soldiers were on the move. So today we're going to start by making pokeberry ink. If you're familiar with pokeberries, uh, you may know it as a weed you don't want in your yard or that grows along the ditches and other byways. Uh, it is uh, often tall plants. These pokeweed plants can get to be as tall as eight foot. They've got bright red stems and big bushy green leaves. And they have on their stem a cluster of flowers that once they're pollinated by different bees and wasps, eventually produce berries. And these dark little purple, uh, almost black looking berries, when you crush up, create a really staining dark juice. And so that's what we're gonna use to make our uh, ink today. Now the plant itself, the pokeberry, is Phytoleca americana, and it's one of many different pokeberries or pokeweeds that grow uh, all over the United States. So this would have been a ready source for the soldiers, other frontiersmen of the time period to have access to. Now to be clear, uh, we don't have any reference to Lewis and Clark or the other soldiers making berry ink on the expedition, but it wouldn't be unheard of to find some berries and make up a quick ink, to jot down some field notes that you eventually put back in your journal with a better ink later on. But this is a ink that was common during the time we have accounts even of Revolutionary War soldiers using pokeberry ink to write uh, their journals and letters back home. And so today I went out and I picked a big bowl full of uh, pokeberries. And that is part of why I am not dressed up in my soldier's uniform like I usually am. This pokeberry will stain, it will get everywhere. So you'll see in most of the video of me harvesting and processing the berries, I'm using these bright blue gloves here. Uh, because I didn't want to stain my hands or my clothes any more than necessary. Uh, we're not doing a washing or laundry video anytime soon, so I didn't want to get it all over my uniform. Uh, so I wore gloves for all of this. It's important to know that pokeberry is a little bit toxic. You don't want to consume it. You don't really want it sitting on your skin for too long. So that is a bit of a warning. Now, if you want to follow along as I'm making ink today, you can also do this with blackberries or even blueberries, but it may not work as well. So our recipe of this uh, pokeberry plant comes from Locust Grove, which has a connection to the Clark family as well. On their website found a, a not really a recipe, but a mixture of how to get an ink that will set and last. With any ink, it's important to have a pigment, a binder, and a preservative. And so today from our Locust Grove recipe, we're gonna be using vinegar. I have a white vinegar here. They may have had more of an apple cider vinegar, some salt, and then the juice itself. So how did I get the juice? Again, it's very important to wear gloves. Be careful, you don't want to ruin anything on this experiment that we're doing. So I got a, a disposable bowl. These are not things I wanted to get ruined by the, by the juice. And uh, I loaded it up with these pokeberries. They can kind of be hard to pull off at first. Um, it's important that you go against the length of stem as you're pulling off these bunches of berries. Uh, I loaded them up into a bowl. And then what I did is I stripped all of the berries off of the stems, left those outside, and then using my gloved hands, I got in there and started to crush and mix up those berries. It created quite a mess, and so I moved things back outside uh, where I then poured my slop of uh, juice and seeds and little bits of berry all into a uh, clean cloth that I had ready to go. I then twisted that cloth and it strained out the seeds and pulp and little bits of berry and gave me nothing but juice. And that's what gives me this final product here. You can see I'm already very happy with this uh, coloring, this pink and purple. It's really gonna make a fun ink, I think. Uh, so we have this ink, it's ready to go. Um, you could start writing with this alone, but again, I said there was those two other parts that I'm worried about the uh, binder, which is what helps the ink or pigment stay to the page. And that's what I have here in the vinegar. 
The vinegar will also help it to uh, last a little bit longer uh, without spoiling. So I've added some vinegar. And I'm also going to put in some salt. Now the salt is maybe it's to help thicken it up a little bit, but more importantly, this should help to preserve it, keep some things from growing on it. So we're going to add that in here, maybe just a little bit more. I'm going to put the lid back on and shake it up. And that right there, folks, is why you want to wear gloves while you're doing that. You can see we've already got quite a mess that shows up on the paper very easily. So we're going to shake that up, work the vinegar and the salt in a little bit. Um, ink like this is not going to last very long. You're using juice, which mold and other stuff will want to ruin. Uh, but this is enough uh, ink that we will have a fun little project for today. So I'm going to leave that on there with my notes. And there we go. We've got some pokeberry ink. Uh, let's get some paper and a quill and we can try our hand at it. Now, please forgive me, my handwriting with quill and ink is not very good. Uh, so this is gonna take a little experimentation, but let's give it a go. So I'm gonna dip that in. It actually looks thin, uh, but it actually draws up into the quill pretty well. Um, so we'll give that a shot. I'm gonna, ooh, that's a big drop. We will start by writing Lewis and Ooh, almost out of ink there. And Clark. Now you can see here from this ink, it's kind of runny because it is a juice. But this is not waterproof. So if you were to soak these in the rain or drop your journal in the river, a lot of this could be washed away and lost. So this is kind of your first draft ink. Uh, and you would find a better ink that could be a lot longer lasting on the page. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how it works. I'm gonna show you a different view uh, from above and you can get a feel for how it looks. All right, so we are gonna try it from above. This is a little awkward for me to write, but gives you a better view. So I'm gonna put my quill in the ink and get ready to write. Let's see. The problem I've had with this is it's kind of thin. And what I could do is use a thickener like gum arabic or some alum. Uh, those would be period appropriate thickeners. Something to make this a little less runny. Um, I'm not going to do that with this one because I want this one to reflect that this is something that you're using in a pinch. This is not your preferred ink. We will do that with some of our other ink and writing videos, talk about some of those other products. Uh, but for this one, uh, it'll be a little bit of experimenting as how much you can take into your quill. So I got Lewis and Clark there. It's already starting to seep into the page really good. And we can see what we can do with some doodles and some little squiggles there. It actually does flow very nicely from the quill. I'm actually quite happy about that. Um, just a little heavy on the front end. And if I don't take, so, take as much, that does improve it a little bit. All right, so that is pokeberry ink. Again, please be careful as you're processing it. You don't want any stains, and you don't want to ingest any of it, but it is a fun project that you can find from what you might consider a weed in your yard uh, to make an ink that you can actually write with. The safer alternative is, of course, using, say, blackberry, uh, and that would be period accurate as well. This is our first video in a series of videos on making ink. Our next video is gonna be on lamp black. So. Uh, to find that video and other videos online, you can check us out at www.campdubois.com or you can find us on our YouTube page and our Facebook page. Until then, thanks for watching.